Hello and welcome to my new tutorial about how to generate PBR materials using Midjourney 5 and Unity's shader graph. If you are a game developer or 3D artist, you know how important it is to create a realistic materials for your game environments and models. But sometimes creating these materials from scratch can be a time consuming and daunting task. That's where Midjourney 5 and Shader Graph comes in. These powerful tools allows you to create custom PBR materials quickly and easily with full control over every aspect of your material. So finally, in Midjourney 5, they reactivated the tiling feature, which allows you to create seamless textures. This feature was absent in Midjourney 4, and many struggled to create a seamless textures in that version. So you can create now a seamless texture that can be repeated infinitely, making it perfect for creating materials like grass, breaks, and more. I'll be working you through the entire process from setting up these tools, how to create the prompts in Midjourney 5, and then how to create a shader graph that allows you to simulate any PBR material in Unity Engine. This is Ramiz al from Binary Lunar, and let's get started. So first things first, we need to create the seamless textures using Midjourney. And we can start by making sure that we are using the latest version of Midjourney by typing slash settings, hit enter, then make sure that you have chosen Midjourney version 5. Then simply we can type what we want to see, what type of texture to render, and we can just simply type imagine and describe what we want to see. So for example here, if we want to see a realistic soil texture, we just type that, realistic soil texture. And here is the trick to use the feature of the seamless tiling or seamless texture by typing double dash or double minus then tile to request or call the tiling command. Then we hit enter and we wait the results. Meanwhile, uh, Midjourney will render four samples of different textures where you can choose one of them to upscale it to the maximum quality, or you can choose to create another variant of each texture. So once you upscaled one of the textures, you can click on it, then open in browser to get the maximum quality possible. Then you can save that to your downloads and then you can check if it is really seamless or not by going to the seamless texture checker website by and just to drag the texture to it check if it's seamless and if you like the results then you can import that to unity to start creating a shader graph to make the material feel more realistic by creating pbr material which is physical based rendering that makes the material feels realistic. And by the way, if you are not happy with the photo generated in Midjourney, you can upscale it to get a better quality using ai.nero.com to get the maximum resolution possible of the art or the texture that you generated. So let's create a new Unity project using the 3D URP template. So let's create a new material and let's name it metal material so let's create 3d object sphere okay it's... then we create a new shader graph so right click create shader graph urp lit shader graph then we apply the shader graph to the material by dragging the shader to it then we apply the material to the game object by dragging also the first node we need of course is to create a sample texture 2d node and we create a property texture 2d which is the main texture and we link it to the texture on the sample texture 2d node of course we can use this metal texture that we created in midjourney and to test if it's working we simply link it to the base color let's save go back to the scene uh, here we need to assign the material yeah we can see a flat surface of metal with no 
terrain or details that represent the PBR material. So first let's have some more control over the main texture by adding a tiling and offset node to allow us to repeat the seamless texture endlessly to get more details on the surface of our game object. Let's create tiling and offset node. We link it to the UV and we only need tiling control for now. So we can create vector2 tiling and link it to the tiling while keeping the default values to one on the Y, one on the X. Select the sphere and now in the shader properties, we have the tiling. So we can now, for example, repeat this texture 10 times on X and 10 times on Y to increase the details of the surface. So the first thing to give the material the feeling of the surface is the normal map texture. And to create that from the texture we got, there is a simple node which is called normal map from texture. We get the information from the main texture. As you can see here, it shows where the places that have bumps or and where are the points that feels deep in the texture. And of course, we can link the same tiling offs and offset to keep to keep the same tiling on the normal map too. And we can create two new parameters to control the offset and the threads of the normal map. So we can create first float is offset. Let's name it normal map offset. And the other one, of course, we set the normal map offset to be default 0.5, the same default value. And we can set another float normal threads to control the threads of the normal map and set the default value to 8 for now. Later we can be more specific and we'll link the results to the normal on the main node, master node. Let's save and see what we got till now. As you can see, you can control the normal map offset. When it's zero, the texture is totally flat. When it's 0 0.5, we can see the details of the terrain of the surface has been presented realistically. And you can control the strength of the normal using this parameter we created here to get more uh, feeling of the surface. We can make this as a slider to avoid getting undesirable uh, values. So we can go back to the shader graph and make the normal offset a slider between zero and one. And also for threads, we can set it to be maybe also a slider between maybe zero and 10. Next, we need to create the metallic and the smoothness maps. To generate the metallic map using any texture, you can start by creating the saturation node to saturate the texture by removing all the colors from it and setting the saturation value to zero. But now we can't see much difference because we are using a metal texture that is a grayscale already. Then we use one minus node to get the highlighted areas in the texture, a smooth step, sorry. We use smooth step node to smooth to do a smooth step between zero, which means there is no metallic feeling to the maximum metallic feeling represented by this one minus node. And we can control that by creating a new float and name it metallic. Oh, we already, I already created that seems. We just make a float and set it to be a slider between zero and one, and we link it to the input. And as you can see now, when the metallic value is zero, the surface acting as non-metallic surface, which absorb all the light. Then we link the results to the metallic on the master node. Let's save and see how that affected our material. So now we have this metallic parameter. We can increase it to get the metallic feeling, see how it makes a difference when we use that. Here is without normal map. Here is without metal. It's flat surface. We do the normal map offset to 0.5. We increase the strength of the normal map to maybe six and increase the metallic. Now we have nice metallic surface. And finally, we can control the smoothness of the surface by adding more control to the, th to the smoothness on the master node. We can use the metallic map that we generated, which is this one, as a mask for the smoothness. Because usually the metallic surfaces are the reflective ones. So the smoothness map control which areas of the materials are reflective and which areas are not. So we simply use the last metallic node we created here to control the smoothness as a mask. So we create a new float and we name it smoothness. 
and simply we multiply it with this smooth step value we got and of course we can set it as a slider between 0 and 1 and we link it to the smoothness we can set the default value to 0 0.5 if you want let's save and go back to the scene with 0 the surface is totally non-reflective 0 0.5 is usually the default value and if we go to the 1 we get maximum reflective, totally reflective surface, which reflects now, currently it's reflecting the skybox, skybox of the scene. Then I used the same technique to create this whole scene using all the textures generated from my journey and using the shader graph we also created. And by just adjusting the parameters to reach the feeling of each surface. So here we have soil material and also sand, which is a bit reflective when it faces the sun here we have the metal material that we created and this ground also we have wood surfaces we have this brick surface and we have this marble thing surface of course you can generate the textures using any other AI generation software such as Stable Diffusion or if you want you can check my friend Sam website which is called Pixela to download some seamless textures. I'll leave you for a minute with Sam. Hey, I'm Sam and I run the SamYam channel where I post Unity content and tutorials. I recently made Pixela.ai which is a website where you can browse and upload AI generated textures, specifically those made with Stable Diffusion. So you can browse through hundreds of seamless textures and once you click on a texture, you can see its 3D preview on different meshes and it is tiled two times so you can check that it is seamless. And you can see further details like the prompt, the seed, and the guidance scale. Then you can just click the download button to download the image. You can also search for images and you can also log in with Google to be able to like photos and save them to your library and also upload textures so that others can use the images you've generated. I'm also planning on adding more features soon. Thanks so much, Binary Lunar, and back to you. And that's it for today's video. If you're interested in learning more about Shader Graph, you can check my ultimate Shader Graph course on Udemy, and there is a link down in the description with a great discount. Also, if you like this video, you can watch my other video about generating 2D assets for your video game using Midjourney and Unity. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell so you keep updated with the new high quality contents and tutorials. And we are deeply thankful for our supporters on Patreon who keep generously supporting us to create this kind of tutorials and quality content. Of course, as a Patreon supporter, you can gain access to download all our projects on Patreon. Till next video, see you soon.